Hi guys, Julian Kersigari here from Search Party Property. I'm on the online prosperity show, talking with Prosper about all things property investing. We're going to discuss what led me into the journey of property investing, how we build portfolios through strategy for our clients, and how the customer is at the forefront of our thoughts on building a great customer experience, and on the back of that, building great and successful and sustainable property portfolios. See you on the inside. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we bring you insights and strategies for building wealth and creating your own destiny. I'm your host, Prosper Taruvinga, and today I've got a special guest joining us, King Julian. How are you doing today? Hey, Prosper. I'm great. Thank you. Good to, good to be on, on finally. Good to meet you. Fantastic. I told you I was going to throw that in for good measure, but I digress. King Julian is not from Madagascar, but he is the co-owner of the bias agency search a party property and he's here to share his expertise in data-led tailored uh, property investment strategies all across australia now he's got a background in customer experience and loyalty marketing and julian has harnessed his passion for customer service and data analytics to open doors for property investors in and around australia he's also a member of the property investment professionals of australia and he's here to let us in on the juicy details of search party, um, you know, buyers agents. Now, Julian, I could go on and on and you could start moving it and moving it just like King Julian. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your journey and what led you to the world of property investment? Yeah, sure. Thank you for that introduction, Prosper. Um, well, yeah, my journey into property, well, I, I guess it initiated firstly if I'm buying my own property um, some 19 so years ago, um, not going down, I guess, a great route. The, probably the what 80% of buyers do, they, they get um, brought into a, a seminar type environment and they get sold a high rise apartment with all the bells and whistles. And uh, that was in Sydney in, in, a, in an area near Newtown. Um, which at the time was the right thing to do. I was single, thought it was a good place to be. Um, it was going to be an investment, so I was never going to move into it, but it was good to have that backup. So it was bought with a, quite a lot of emotion, whereas we teach our clients now to be, you know, reduce the emotion or li limit the emotion of buying property because it should be about the commercials and the return on your property rather than, you know, what where it's located or what it looks like or can I drive past it every weekend to look at my property. Um, so, yeah, that was my first uh, foray into property investing. And then, um, you know, I guess then the journey went on, work, life, married, uh, kids. Um, we had our own our own home, which was in the inner, inner city, in the west of Sydney. And then... Um, yeah, during that period, bought a couple of more investment properties um, in uh, the early 2000s. And then, uh, you know, kids take over, careers take over. We got really busy. We were able to move overseas so as an expats um, on, a, on a journey, which was one of the best experiences of our lives, at two young kids and um, my wife and I. And uh, that, was ex that was three and a half years. And when we got back, it's probably when we get really serious about property. And, um, you know, bought, I think one year, we bought five properties in one year. So that was pre the Royal Commission. So we couldn't do that today because the banks have to uh, behave themselves. But back then there were, you know, one page loan contracts to sign and um, they kept loaning you money. So, you know, looking back um, to that period, it was about 2015, if we didn't buy those properties then, we'd be in a very different position today. So, you know, I think one of the key things we often say to our clients, it's about, um, you know, building your team, but also taking action and actually moving on the property journey. Fantastic. And what a property journey you have had. And, you know, a lot of um, people in your space uh, know the theoretical part of owning properties and not actually being or having any skin in the game, um, you know, at all. What 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 is your view on the current sort of real estate market and uh, the spruikers that show up in the space purporting to help people, um, you know, get up the property ladder? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's like most industries prosper, but you know, I guess the real estate industry does have that reputation with those type of, you know, particularly going back. Um, when I started in property investing 19 years ago, there was no podcast like your show. There was, uh, you know, there were books and seminars. That was it. So no internet. You know, we couldn't research like we have now. With, um, you know, I, I, I produce a piece of content educational every single day on LinkedIn. Um, you couldn't do that. You couldn't follow someone like me and, and get educated on property just by watching someone for free. So 
it was a lot tougher back then, but today I, I feel the buyers are a little bit wiser. Um, they have got the ability to research. Now, it doesn't say that uh, these sort of spruikers don't exist, and they do, and they sort of have that one-stop package and have the financial planner and the accountant and, and everything together and, you know, use tactics around scarcity. If you don't buy today while you're in a seminar, we'll run out of stock and things like that. But um, it's a shame, but I, I think, you know, that's why I align myself with associations like, like PIPA, um, other um, – property-based associations, having my license in, in all states, things like that, to just make sure I'm above the game and uh, I do the right thing ethically and, and we just focus on that from, for our business. What others do is out of my control, so I just focus on what we do. Fantastic. Yeah, you can't control what you definitely cannot control. And um, I've also noticed that um, you are very um, visible on social media, which really sparks my interest as a digital marketer. And you know, you purport that from day one, you've been really active on social media, providing daily posts and adding value to your uh, prospects or the people that you can serve in the future. Now, how has that sort of thought leadership approach helped you to actually connect with your target audience? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. I think it's something that started way back when the company was founded by Luke Maroney, my business partner. And, um, you know, Luke's been doing a Facebook Live post, Facebook Live post every day, I think for almost over four years. Uh, and that's quite a commitment. And, and uh, so that's, you know, that one thing builds up a little bit of a community and a tribe, so to speak. Um, and then from the thought leadership side, which is probably the angle I've taken, is being, you know, just building that, uh, that community and where they I'm not selling to them I'm just educating and 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 helping them along the way and that you know the best um I think compliment you can get sometimes someone saying hey I've been following you for a year or two and I'm ready to buy now and that's like wow all this hasn't been in vain um you know people do appreciate it. or I meet people I met someone the other day at a, at a at an event and hey I've been following your LinkedIn it's uh, really excellent can we have a chat about you know I'm looking to restructure my property portfolio so things like that are, are really nice when you hear that and um so the whole idea there was focusing on the professional network uh, LinkedIn being the only professional network as opposed to Facebook, Instagram and TikTok now. And so I went for that angle. Um, coming from a corporate background, it made sense. LinkedIn, I, I use LinkedIn all the time for work and prospecting. So it felt, it felt like the right channel for me to to educate through. And obviously we can then reuse and that those um, educational pieces across other social media channels as well. Absolutely. And I really value that, um, you know, you guys have really... Uh, come a long way. Did you know, I actually interviewed Luke Moroni when he was only just getting started because he and I had corresponding shows on fa uh, social media, especially Facebook Live. He would do uh, Facebook Live while he was on his balcony and I was doing a 30 minute show and we sort of um, collaborated uh, on a video like this. So um, yeah, it's, it's really good to now notice that you guys have um, you know, really come full circle and created a business that is now uh, serving quite a lot of uh, people. Now, this concept is called progress over perfection. And um, could you maybe share a few examples of how this mindset has actually now benefited your business? Um, you were mentioning that people would come across you uh, in the public setting and say, hey, because of you, I did not give up. Or, hey, because of you, I now own, um, you know, a substantial amount of properties just because they've been seeing your work on social media. Mm, that's funny you brought that quote up. I've actually got a, a little uh, sign above my printer, uh, computer there which says progress before perfection. So um, it is something uh, that we focus on because, you know, we can try to want to get the lighting right in a, in a, in a room like we were talking about earlier and um, trying to make sure every single piece of copy we produce or, um, or content reduces perfect. But it's really getting it out there and getting started. And, you know, Luke would, would be the first to admit in his first few videos years ago it was bad sound and and um, things like that, especially, as you said, on the balcony in Dremoyne with cars and traffic. But, uh, you know, you, you get better and you get better and get more confident. And he's just excellent at that and something I'm still learning, the camera. But, um, yeah, it is about getting moving and getting started. And one of the acronyms we use actually in our business is turning on your tap. So the T being building your team. So, you know, your financial planner, your accountant, your mortgage broker, potentially your uh, real estate agent or your buyer's agent like us to help you build that strategy to, to build your portfolio. Um, and then the A is for taking action. 
as I mentioned earlier, you know, it's about taking action and actually buying something because a lot of people will sit back and procrastinate and want to be the perfect. I can't tell you how many people I speak to every week about I'm waiting for the market to crash. I mean, they've been saying that for three years. So, and if you believe every headline on the uh, on the press, well, you'll never buy anything, right? You'd be curled up in a ball on your under your blanket. So, you know, it is important to take action with the research, with the right professionals, and then the P is for having patience. So, you know, property takes time. It's not a get quick rich scheme. If someone wants to make money quickly, then you know we might point them towards uh, cryptocurrency or something like that. But property, you do, to, you do need to have patience and uh, you know and let the right um, right times and the right periods of time. And we have cycles and, and, and things move, move together in, in good harmony over a long period of time. Fantastic. It's not necessarily about timing the market, but it is about time in the market, right? Now, talking about time and not being able to turn back time, you lost your mom at an early age. And could you just maybe elaborate how losing your mom at that age um, and maybe you witnessing her, maybe her unfulfilled retirement dreams, you know, had an impact on the person that you are today. And let us know, how did that sort of shape your perspective on life and motivate you to actually start taking action? Yeah, not to, yeah, to reflect back like that. Um, yeah, mum passed away in 2001. So, you know, I was in my late 20s. Um and, you know, during that time, she got she had motor neurone disease um, and that a disease that kind of just shuts you down over a period of years. And I think she had it for four years or so. And um, yeah, I think just watching that happen, watching a strong, strong person. My mum was very, a very strong willed person, you know, full time work. Migrants come to Australia with three young kids and build a future for their children. Right. So she was a very hard working lady and, um, um, you know, taught us the ethics around hard work and um, wanting to turn up every day and push hard and not listen to too much outside noise and um, do your best and uh, things will always happen. But if you sit back and wait, well, nothing much is going to happen. So I guess watching mum go through that was probably a tough time for me emotionally. Um, it's probably one way of hiding my emotions or, or depression maybe could have been through, you know, being at that age, going out a lot, partying a little bit too hard at times and sort of masking it with a few too many drinks. Um but I think coming out of the back of that loss was probably a new energy and, you know, maybe a shining light looking down upon me. But I think I probably grew up over that time and, uh, you know, then met my my wife and, um, yeah, probably just grew up and got settled and really focused on achieving my dreams. And, um, you know, mum, like you said correctly, had had big dreams about living overseas and um, she comes from a tropical beautiful uh, area in, in India called Goa, which is down south, which is a Portuguese um, previously um, colonized area. So, you know, she was on six months there, six months in Australia and all those type of things. Dad was a bit older, so he had already retired. So she never got to do any of that. So now coming to the similar age, um, yeah, it probably motivated me to achieve a few of my goals to really go hard at my career. Um, but also balancing that with your friendships, um, my immediate family, my, my sisters, um, being a good friend, just being a good listener, being around. And I, I kind of work really hard at that. Um, and uh, ensure I try to keep in touch as where I can with as many people as I can. Um, and then, you know, when life gets busy, it's, it's hard to balance that with your, your, your wife, but also your children and uh, trying to be a good dad, being involved in their lives. And uh, I have two daughters and so they're now teenagers, but, you know, got involved in netball and committees and all those type of things to just be part of their, um, part of their lives. And I know probably sometimes I embarrass them, but I'm sure in the future they'll be uh, appreciative that I was around, but um I think it was more about just achieving and not waiting till I hit retirement before I want to do things. And so one of those things that I always want to do, Prosper, was be an entrepreneur and, and start my own business. And I, you know, I had the, the pleasure of working with a, one of Australia's greatest entrepreneurs in, um, in a previous company in that loyalty space. And, uh, you know, learned a lot about that and always wanted to be an entrepreneur myself. And uh, so, you know, got to that stage of world where I just keep moving through the corporate ladder and, you know, the golden handcuffs where you're getting very well paid. Um, you know, it's obviously I miss the business class travel to Europe and all those type of things that come with that. But, um, you know, I've never been happier in my life in terms of getting up in the morning and, and really hitting, hitting it hard for every single day, working hard for my, for my business. And, you know, then you have a team, so you have more responsibilities and you're paying salaries and wages. So, um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. And it's, you know, it's great to be sharing it with their business partner as well. Fantastic. And Julian, what would, what would mom be celebrating with you right now? Hmm. 
I think just, yeah, that I'm achieving, you know, what are the goals I want to achieve and doing it the right way, um, you know, using ethics and hard work um, in our business. And then I guess more, more celebration probably be just from a private, from a private life, you know, trying to uh, find that balance with my daughters. I've, she never got to meet my daughters. So, um, you know, I'm sure she'd be pretty proud of them. I got a daughter who's 18 and, and 16. So yeah, it'd be, um, I'm sure she's looking down and there's obviously parts of them that I can see and that came from her as well. Well, congratulations on all your successes. It seems like you are going to be making um, your daughters proud, even though they're not telling you right now. You know? <laughs> not yet. Now I'm a uh, yeah, pretty I, uncool old man, but maybe in the future, yeah. I have two girls myself as well, and I think in their eyes, I'm only um, the guy that takes out the garbage. So <laughs> you can imagine what that looks like. Now, now, Jillian, you've gone on and created something remarkable, you and your uh, business partner there, your agency, Search Party uh, Property. You are obviously offering other people an opportunity to not go through uh, the hardships or any of that misinformation that's out there regarding, um, you know, property investment and things of that nature. Now, could you explain how this uh, this service actually helps property investors create their own destiny um, in retirement? Yeah, from our from the outset for us, it's that word strategy. So, you know, we don't present properties in that first discussion. You know, initially it's about really understanding the prospect, what what floats their boat, what are their goals, what are aspirations, um, what are they trying to achieve through property investing? And some people have never thought that far, right? It's a, it's Australia's greatest pastime that I can go to a barbecue and say, hey, I'm a property investor and and talk about property. So for us, it's really trying to nail that down and understand what we're trying to achieve. Um, you know, before we start any of the property search, once they become a client, we have a strategy session, which is a good hour. And we work through a lot of uh, information through a slide slide deck and um, really try to understand that client. We then do a lot of data, show them a lot of analytics that we're looking at, why we're looking at certain areas, why we think this area would suit them better than that area, um, the difference between a cash flow to capital growth. So we're not just pushing people into areas or regions. That's because the only place that we can sell in, we're actually uh, using data to direct us and, and help them create that strategy. And then once we build that strategy, we obviously buy the property, high hand, hold them through the entire process with our client services team. And then when they come back again, we review that. We don't just go and buy because we want them to buy another property. We review their situation, review their analytics, and then see where we're headed towards that goal. So we had a goal when we initially started. Um, but as you know, in business, you have to have a plan to get there. So when you fail to plan, you're never going to reach that goal. So we ensure that we're continually checking in on that plan and uh, make sure we hit that goal, which let's say it's $200,000 of uh, of revenue by the time they're 65 or when they're ready to retire. So how do we get there? Is it, you know, some people might say, oh, you want to buy 10 properties in 10 years. We don't subscribe to that. We're more uh, analytical around it. Could be just four very good properties. You don't need to have 10 properties. Fantastic. And obviously you are ho- um, hand holding all the investors along the way. Now, one thing that I've also experienced while um, on my investment journey was there's a lot of uh, pockets that you have to uh, fill or pockets that you have to grease along the way, you know, from your conveyancer, the lawyers, you know, you're probably going to need an accountant. So you're just going to need a whole team around you. And, um, you know, setting up an investment team is a really big and important step in the whole process. Now, could you share some sort of insights of how you help your clients build their property management team so that the whole process is seamless, as you say, um, you know, so that they can actually, um, you know, get the the best value for their investment journey. Yeah, I mean, one thing we do say, you know, we are truly independent from any other source. So we're not receiving, like you said, I use the word greasing palms or kickbacks. Um, but we do, I obviously work with some really good partners. So if you come to us and say you don't have a, a broker, well, okay, well, would you like us to introduce you to, to a couple of people? So we might introduce you to a couple of our brokers that we work with a lot because we know they're good. We know they're property investment savvy, which is really important. Not every broker understands how to build a property portfolio. Um, so we'd recommend them, we ask them to go and you know, interview them and see who you want to work with and then and start, the, start the ball rolling from there. I mean, finance is important. So having um, finance is really the king of this whole transaction because if you don't have finance, 
Uh, we can talk about property all day long, but uh, you can't buy anything. So that's a really big step. And then obviously, you know, um, your accountant, as you said, again, someone who understands the, um, a savvy around property investing because we need to understand the deductions, um, how we can work that into your into your portfolio. People talk about building trust. Do you need a trust if you're a pay-as-you-go earner? Do you really need a, a family trust? Maybe not. Maybe not no advantage to you. But um, if you're in a highly litigious industry or business, it might be of an advantage to you to have trust that can protect your assets, um, but not always um, always required if you're a, a pay-as-you-go earner. Um, then you've got self and super fund, another very lot of red tape around that. So that's where you, again, you need a real expert in that to set that up for you. And then making sure you buy well inside that, that fund and that trust. Absolutely. And, um, you know, obviously if somebody's watching this show right now, Julian, and they are really uh, taken a keen interest in knowing what the search party uh, can do for them, what would be the best way uh, for people to get a hold of you? Uh, well, like another uh, probably a, good, a great place to start is our website, searchpartyproperty.com.au. Um, we're also all over uh, the socials, so Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, follow me on LinkedIn every day for uh, um, an educational post um, at, at, at my name, Julian Kersigara. Um, also, Luke Maroney is, uh, is a great asset as well if you want to uh, hear some hear about a deal every day or just a, uh, his thought process through what's happening in the property market each and every day. Fantastic. Now, somebody might also be sitting here and thinking, ah, how do you actually manage to tailor, um, you know, individual needs as you say you would? Because, you know, not everyone is going to want that 10 uh, properties in 10 years sort of strategy that is out there. And every in investor is sort of a unique individual in and of their investor attitudes or appetites. And they've got their own, you know, unique goals and motivations. Now, how do you approach, um, you know, developing personalized investment strategies for your clients? Yeah, so it's going back to that one step at the, at the start is getting to understand them as an individual. Um, you know, what is their risk appetite? What is what is what are their goals and dreams? You know, we have um, a lot of our best clients are probably migrants because they're coming to this country to achieve and to grow and to, and to do something very different that they probably couldn't do back in their home country. So we find they're really motivated um, are really wanting to take action and, and listen and learn. And actually, you know, we often say it's not about, it's just not a transaction to us. It's up to your partnership. So we want to educate you through the process. We want to walk you through our due diligence report on every property and talk you through the points of data. So obviously, yes, you got there's a trust element. Trust me, it's a good deal to buy, but also we want to show you why it's a good deal to buy. So you really understand and feel really familiar with the process that we're doing. So um, that's why that's such a big element for us to really understand that and then put them through um, that that process. We also use um, software, one called Game Plans, we, we use. And Game Plans is a is a monetary um, man money management tool and also a, a portfolio management tool. So we can put in your current situation. Um, we can also edit it throughout the next you know 10, 20 years. Let's say it's a 20 year plan. We might have private school fees in between there. We might have a redundancy. We might have an inheritance. So we can keep updating that to head to, head to that goal. And if there is a hiccup along the way, which there always is, um, we can we can amend that. We can still look at that end goal and say, well, actually looking at what our plans were here using compound interest and compound growth, we were going to buy the, the third property in 2027. Well, because you've lost your job, we'll push that back a year because we won't have that fund. Or, you know, what's happened with APRA being a lot tighter on lending restrictions. So that's made it a bit harder to build these really fast portfolios, which were able to be done pre um, the APRA Royal Commission. Fantastic. That's that's quite an interesting sort of uh, addition, because if you can see uh, further where you're going, it's easier for you to then know what steps you need to take on, um, you know, today in order for you to achieve the, the goals that you put yourself for. Now, Julian, we've looked at the past on how, uh, you know, Luke Moroni on his balcony started search party and we were high-fiving each other while, um, you know, showcasing our businesses back then. And we've looked at where you guys are right now, um, you know, in, in relation to, you know, the current market and how you're actually helping, um, you know, your your clients achieve their retirement plans without uh, looking towards the government <laughs> to assist <laughs> them in the future. Now, 
looking ahead, you said you've got this game plan uh, tool that helps you focus what people can uh, do. What are your future plans, um, especially for search party property? And how do you aim to actually make property investment more accessible to a lot more people out there? Yeah, I guess for us, it's a, you know really about keeping our heads down and focusing on what we do well. There are many um, buyers that you come into the market quickly and grow very quickly using different types of tactics and, and tools. I guess one of the things we're very big on is, is um, you know, consistency, um, cut the client service and, and is a really big deal for us. I often, someone says to me, uh, what would you have done differently looking back four years ago? And, you know, one of the things I was really big on was creating our whole client journey. In fact, we hired one of our first full-time hires was a, a customer service manager, which is not normally what you would do. You'd normally probably look at revenue generating activities like sales and do it that way. But that was so important for me. If we got that client journey right, which we do and we have, and we're always improving it, it, it it's a huge difference. And so I think we'll be really well known for that. Um, you know, 70% of our clients are from referrals, which says a lot. Um, you know, again, I think 80% of our clients have, you know, three or more properties. Um, so a lot of those things are really important to us um, and trying to be more accessible and achievable. So we're not just selling or buying for people with, you know, three, $5 million budgets. You know, we're buying properties for people who just, you know, single single mums or single women who just want to get on the, on the property ladder and only have 320000 to spend. So we can still find them something that's going to be a good investment cash flow wise, for example, let's say in Perth and be able to do that and move as opposed to saying, no, you can't buy anything in Sydney because you've got to spend a million dollars. This gives people hope and they can start small to build up that portfolio. And that's probably the most uh, uh, joy I get out of any deal is watching someone like that or a young couple just wanting to get on the boat, on, on, the, on the ladder, knowing that they can't do it. You know, they can't buy their dream home in Mossman, but uh, so they can rent in Mossman, become a, a rent investor. So keep renting and invest elsewhere outside of their um the, you know, what we call borderless investing. Fantastic. I really, really enjoyed having you on the uh, show today, Julian. I mean, your life story and your experience um, coupled with what you're now doing to help people be, do and have a happier existence is just um, remarkable. So thank you so much for your time on the show today. Yeah, thank you, Prosper. I enjoyed myself and thanks for inviting me. Fantastic. Now, those that are watching, that concludes our insightful conversation with Julian, um, the co-owner of Search Party Property. And today we learned about the power of customer focus. As you heard from Julian himself, their first hire was somebody who was customer orientated instead of them uh, going in for the property. All right. And if you notice, um, you know, their thought leadership and data-driven strategies are really making a dent in the property investment market. And if you were paying attention, you'd notice that Julian's uh, dedication to helping investors build their own destinies has actually made property investment more accessible and achievable for people from various backgrounds. It doesn't matter whether you are just getting started or you actually are, um, you know, a little bit advanced, you need to uh, get in touch with the team at Search Party Property. And for you to stay connected with um, Julian and learn more about Search Property, we're going to be putting their details in the show notes um, below. And be sure to visit their website and follow them on social media. Like Julian says, he does post uh, thought leadership content out there every single day. Now, thank you so much, uh, Julian, again, for sharing your expertise with us today. And thank you, listeners, for tuning into the Online Prosperity Show. And remember, your future um, financial prosperity is within your reach. You just need to know where to find it. And the first place could be uh, being part of the search party. Now, search, um, search party details will be... Uh, in the show notes um, below. Now stay tuned for more empowering episodes. That'll be it from me and Julian today. Bye for now.